My name is Ben Greenfield, and on this episode of the Ben Greenfield Life Podcast. We normally use about 10% of our muscle mass every decade. At the age of like 85, we're left as men with like 60% or something like this. That has impact to our hormonal balances, to our activity levels. It has an impact to like how we burn calories. It has an impact on how we recover if we're tripping. Are we falling? Are we not? Are we breaking bones? Are we not? We can solve this. It's a bold statement, but I have a lot of customers in their 70s and even some in their 80s. They say like it's rejuvenating and they're becoming more active and females in their 60s say I can play with my kids again. It's, it's beautiful. Faith, family, fitness, health, performance, nutrition, longevity, ancestral living, biohacking, and a whole lot more. Welcome to the show. I'm going to tell you a quick story. One of my friends took this fringe weight and blood sugar control supplement called semaglutide. It's a peptide. This was like three days after he took it and I was sitting with him at dinner and he couldn't eat. He literally just like couldn't eat. He was staring at the food, no appetite. And obviously that's why semaglutide is used for things like, you know, diabetes and obesity and significant appetite control. I'm personally a foodie, so I probably wouldn't go near the stuff because I like to eat. What my friend was doing this whole time was he was tracking his blood glucose. He was holding his phone up by his armpit and then take his phone away. And he could see his blood glucose just dropping over three days in real time at any point. One of my other friends was at dinner. He's like, what are you doing? Why do you keep holding your phone up to your armpit? He's like, because look, I can see my blood glucose whenever I want. Well, he was using a blood glucose monitor rather than those annoying things that you test your blood with on your fingertip from the drugstore. And he was using this monitor supported by this company called Levels. So Levels is basically a company that has partnered with these blood glucose monitors where they send it out to your house, you put it on, and then you track your blood glucose in real time anywhere you are. Like, how do green beans affect my blood sugar? How does steak affect my blood sugar? How does sledding in the snow affect my blood sugar? How does a stressful email affect my blood sugar? What lifestyle changes, diet changes, exercise changes can I make for better blood glucose? Because that's highly correlated to health and overall longevity. So Levels is at the cutting edge of this stuff. And if you want to get in on Levels and better understand how food affects your health and try a continuous blood glucose monitor for yourself, you can go to levels.link slash Ben. That's levels.link slash Ben. Levels.link slash Ben. They got a bunch of all the information you need over there about how to get started with blood glucose monitoring. Levels.link slash Ben. One of my favorite ways these days to strengthen my immune system and optimize my recovery is by getting in my clear light sauna. It's a clear light infrared sauna. Helps you create heat shock proteins that stimulate cell repair and help to rebuild muscles faster and protect against degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And most people aren't aware of the essential role that these heat shock proteins play in immune function too, which is really nice this time of year when their sickness is going around. It allows your immune system to react more quickly and efficiently to viruses and pathogens. It helps to inhibit viral replication and decrease levels of inflammatory cytokines while at the same time, the heat increases nitric oxide production in the body, which also has antiviral effects. Now, what I have at my house is a clear light sanctuary sauna because I can get a whole bunch of my friends in there. We can sit around, we can chat, we can burn incense and sprinkle essential oils like little hippies all over the place. But we're also guilt-free because all the clear light saunas, unlike many of the saunas out there that basically microwave you while you're inside of them, these ones have EMF and ELF shielding. So you're not exposing your body to harmful, dirty electricity. And they come with a lifetime warranty which is the ultimate guarantee of a quality product. And these things are high quality. So you get their complete line that you can check out at Clearlight Saunas when you go to healwithheat.com, healwithheat.com. Mention code Ben for extra discount and free shipping. That's healwithheat.com. Mention my name, Ben, for a smoking hot deal and free shipping. One of my favorite not carbohydrate, not fat, not protein, little known secret macronutrients is now back in stock. It's called ketones. The ones I use are made by HVMN. They're called Ketone IQ. They're perfect for staving your appetite for hours on end, running from meeting to meeting when you can't get food, any type of endurance activity because ketones are a great fuel for the heart, for the liver, for the diaphragm. Anytime you want a great amount of portability, convenience on an airplane, it's amazing because you're not even tempted at all by any food the whole time you're sitting on the airplane. Ketones are 28% more efficient at generating energy than sugar alone. That means you can do a lot more with a lot less, especially when your body gets pushed to limits because ketones help you convert stored fat into energy. And then with Ketone IQ, you can actually get that without having to fast and excessively restrict carbohydrates. 
They created this stuff through a $6 million contract from the U.S. Department of Defense, deep partnerships with some of the top researchers in ketone science. It's a truly cutting-edge drink. It avoids the insulin spikes, the caffeine jitters, the mid-afternoon energy crashes. Super simple. You just throw this stuff back. I'll toss back a shot straight out of the bottle. Some people like to mix it with a little water, stevia, stuff like that. But either way, HVMN stands by their products 100%. All right, if you're not satisfied, your order is free. That's how much they believe, and I believe, in the power of ketones. Been using them for years and years. Here's how to get 20% off of any purchase of Ketone IQ. You go to hvmn.me slash beng. hvmn.me slash beng. Use code beng. That gets you 20% off of any purchase of Ketone IQ. You can also find them at any California Earth Bar locations, which are usually usually within an Equinox So check them out, hvmn.me slash Ben G. So a few months ago, I released a podcast episode about what I titled as as the world's most efficient biohacked workout. It was a whole episode where me and my guest went deep into the science behind what's called full body electromuscle stimulation. And we talked about this suit. You may have seen it before. It's it's kind of become this big thing amongst celebrities and biohackers and fitness enthusiasts. It's a suit that you actually pull on that's an electrical muscle stimulation suit. And unlike uh, many of the, the former EMS suits that have existed up until that point, there are no long cables and wires and things sticking out of it. So it's just like all wireless. You pull it on and then uh, you basically link it to an iPad and a trainer is right there walking you through an entire workout with moves like squats and lunges and presses. It'll literally simulate you feeling as though you've lifted hundreds of pounds, but it's just this suit that you pull on. So I kind of predicted when we recorded that episode that this technology was going to take the fitness world by storm, and it has. I mean, pro athletes are using this to build muscles that they've never been able to build before, to train muscles they've never used before, to retrain injured muscles. Uh, And people all over the world now are, are using this thing as a way to basically get all the benefits of heavy lifting, rehab, injury recovery, cardio, blood flow, et cetera, simply by pulling on a pair of shorts and a shirt that are lined with electrical muscle stimulation and then just basically going to town uh, with, a, with a very, very small footprint and an easy to use device that'll, that'll travel everywhere. I interviewed the guy who founded this company and actually brought full body EMS to the United States. And his name is Bjorn Walterman. And uh, there's been a lot going on in terms of electrical muscle stimulation technology, uh, some of the news, some of the science on it, even things like bone density and sarcopenia and congestive heart failure. And I thought it'd be cool to get Bjorn back on to revisit this whole idea behind EMS and how it works for those of you who didn't get a chance to listen to the first episode, and also to delve into some of the burning questions that I've gotten from my audience about this catalyst EMS suit, and also some of the questions that I have. So if you're listening in and you want a link to the previous podcast for an even more thorough explanation of what the technology is and how it works, then you can go to bengreenfieldlife.com forward slash catalyst two. That's bengreenfieldlife.com forward slash catalyst, the number two. And I'll link to my original podcast with Bjorn, some other articles that I've written about electrical muscle stimulation, and then, of course, all the show notes for what we're about to talk about today. So, Bjorn, welcome back to the show, man. Thank you for having me, Ben. I appreciate you doing this from a hotel down in Mexico. We've we've been trying to make this episode work just to give folks the full update, so... So here we go. What, and what part of Mexico are you in again? We're in uh, Playa del Carmen. Um, okay. It's my wife's birthday, and uh, this is our fixed week a year where I promised her, like, hey, we're going to take a week off. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but it works. Uh, the internet is okay, good enough for this. So here we go. Yeah, you're coming through okay. I was just telling you before we started recording, my wife and I just got back from San Miguel de Allende, which is a fantastic little city in Mexico. It's 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 not in the water, so you don't have a lot of the annoying tourists walking around in swimsuits, but it's just all cobblestone streets and art galleries and amazing kind of like mom and pop shops and and uh we were celebrating the the Day of the Dead, the Dia de las Muertes down there. 
it literally feels like you're uh, you're almost like in, in, in Europe or northern Spain and, and not in Mexico. So if you ever get a chance, you'll have to visit that spot too. I definitely want to. I mean, it's uh, the Day of the Dead is like very high on the list for my wife and mm -hmm. me. And uh, yeah, maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah, well, we got all dressed up for it and painted up. And actually, the conference that I was speaking at or a private group that I was speaking with, the entire thing was based around pondering your own death, you know, working on your tombstone, writing your obituary, learning about deathbed moments, and essentially how you live your life in terms of purpose and motivation and adventure and bucket list items. And so it was actually a pretty, pretty powerful event, of course, surrounded by a bunch of kids out in the streets celebrating the, the Day of the Dead Festival. So it's an interesting experience. Very interesting setting, yes. But of course, we're not going to talk about dying today. Hopefully, we're going to talk about uh, uh, living with electrical muscle stimulation. So I think before we delve into some of the questions I've gotten about this whole catalyst device and some of the things that have been changing in terms of the research and the science that you wanted to hop on and talk with me about, can you give people the basic overview of the catalyst, what it is and, and, and what it does? The Catalyst training system is a, as you said, full body electromuscle stimulation device. Um, it comes in the form of a suit and the suit is modular. It has uh, three components. It has a vest, a shorts uh, piece, and then two arm straps. And with this format, we are capable of serving basically individuals of any shape or size and form and level of activity and fitness and age. Uh, gender, like, you know, all the dimensions, because what we wanted to build is we wanted to build a training system that can literally help uh, people get in shape or achieve their fitness goals, uh, whoever they are and wherever they are on their fitness journey. Uh, it's controlled by an iPad. Um, it's all the smarts and all the softwares within an iPad app, which takes um, training content like uh, Think Netflix, you know, training content uh, out of the cloud. And uh, it communicates with what we call the impulse pack. It's like a small device. It's a little bit like a, a small iPhone, like an iPhone size, a little bit thicker than this. And, and uh, it gets attached to the suit. And uh, there's a Bluetooth connection between the, um, the uh, impulse pack and the, the iPad. Uh, the impulse pack sits on your hip or like a little bit more on your, technically on your hamstrings um, where it doesn't get in the way. Basically that device then sends small electrical currents um, through your body to each muscle group that is targeted in a very specific form. So each uh, impulse for each muscle group is different. And what it does is it simulates or basically superimposes the same signal that you would send from your brain to your muscle to tell the muscle to contract. I mean, tell, right? You, you know right. what I mean? So basically there's a nervous signal that gets through your motor nerve to motor neurons and uh, basically elicits a contraction within um, fibers within the muscle. And this signal, we know exactly how it looks like and what to do. And we can go into different ways of how to do it. Like there's when you wanted to have like fast uh, twitch muscle development with type two muscle fibers, there's a different signal as if you want to have a general strength training, which more elicits like uh, power growth on fast uh, on, on slow twitch muscle fibers, or if you want a cardiovascular, um, just increase and load um, from a taxation of your cardiovascular system, or if you just want a pumping sensation, uh, which helps with nutrient distribution and flush out of lactic acid. So basically, we can exactly tell each muscle in your body what to do, how much to do it, and the muscle cannot differentiate between the signal that comes from your brain and the signal that comes from the training system. Um, what that allows us to do is it allows us to help individuals that either already have maxed out their capabilities because they're athletes and they're on a plateau to give the muscle even more to do and a different stimulus. And I mean, you have used it now for quite some time. And uh, every time you use it, it's like it's, you did a totally different set of training as if you would normally lift because it actually um, activates the muscle in a very, very complete way. Well, it activates the muscle in a very complete way or activates little tiny stabilizing muscles that have been detrained or that you haven't been using because exactly. again, it's bypassing your brain. So your brain doesn't get to select which muscles it's gonna use because that's what is comfortable grabbing. Yeah, you cannot cheat, exactly. That's really what it is. And um, for example, for me, when I first found it, 
I had a very weak lower back. Um, I mean, six foot four, um, tall, uh, skinny guy, and uh, I had massive back problems and didn't know how to like literally train my lower back. And uh, a lot of machines that you also find in the gym, these rotation machines are actually not good for you. But uh, with EMS training, um, you can you can literally trigger and target each muscle in exact way how you want it to achieve the goals that you intend to do. Yeah, and and one thing you mentioned there was how it could be used for recovery. This is probably one way I, I haven't been using it. But for example, when I interviewed the folks who designed this automated blood flow restriction cuff system called the katsu which is kind of a popular training system in in japan and, and and by the way i feel like i get a little bit of a katsu like training effect wearing the catalyst just because there's a little bit of blood flow restriction to the arms and the legs just by having the the suit on but nonetheless the, these guys said well you could you could get a lot of the pumping effect from the katsu the benefits of it from a recovery and a blood flow standpoint by simply wearing it while you are, say, at the office, while you're at your your workstation, uh, preferably your, your standing workstation, and uh, just have it running passively. Uh, and they also recommended that you could, you could do the same if you were just, say, out on a long walk. The catalyst, is that something that you've had users just literally just pull on and have on during a day of work, say, you know, underneath their normal work clothes to occasionally do a little bit of electro mu muscle simulation? We, we haven't had that yet. At least I'm not aware of it. I mean, um, there's uh, there's many users out there um, and they tell us stories like what they achieved with their catalyst suit, I mean, months after. So I don't know if anybody um, used it um, during regular days or uh, in combination with a katsu. What I, what I can tell you is because we have a, a very complete muscle activation, which means there's a very high... Um, use of ADP, uh, glycogen or whatsoever in the muscle in relation to the normal use, uh, there could be an effect where just the general replenishing of nutrients is not fast enough to basically recover, uh, uh, you know, basically replenish the uh, nutrients within the muscle. Where in a katsu, that's exactly what you're doing. You're reducing the um, supply of nutrients and, you know, oxygen yeah. and, you know, that. It could be that because the increase in the catalyst training, um, the increase of basically usage and depletion of nutrients and, and ADP could be um, a similar effect, basically where supply and demand gets out of whack, right? So in katsu, you like uh, restrict the supply and with catalyst, uh, you increase the demand. So yes, there could be a, could be what if you, if you would uh, just strap on your arms, like even more than it should be, you probably also have a blood flow restriction that yeah. we don't recommend that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you don't recommend combining blood flow restriction with electrical muscle simulation. I just don't know. Right. So yeah. it's something that we haven't really tested yet. And before I recommend something like we have thoroughly tested everything, so maybe I should get one and we should like run a small study, but I haven't tested it yet. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that someone recommended to me was I, I do some training on this super slow resistance training device called the ARX. I forget who it was, but they said they'd actually worn the EMS suit while doing super slow training and that it was a, just an absolute game changer in terms of the demand. Now, obviously the catalyst is, is designed originally to use no weights or occasionally very lightweight and that that's kind of the idea is you don't need weights when you use it but have you ever combined it with something like a, a super slow training protocol or some type of very slow and controlled lifting protocol that would allow you to do electrical muscle stimulation and lifting simultaneously yeah what i've done is like i just sometimes use like very small weights in my hands just as exist additional resistance or like these egg weights or like small weights like something like this definitely um, I know that there are pro sports protocols like with soccer players and so on and so forth, where they basically combine it with like squat jumps or box jumps and so on and so forth. But I would definitely do this in a very controlled environment because, um, you know, under the stimulation, you know that you don't have 100 percent control over your motions like as much as you're used to. Um, so as a beginner, I wouldn't do it as a pro. Well, yeah, there is something um, I combine it with a TRX, something like this, um, just to like, you know, mix it up a little bit. We don't have content for that yet, but maybe one day. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's obviously a lot of uses that I'm sure people are experimenting with the Catalyst on. But the one that I think is probably 
in addition to just your your full body strength routine that you have in there is the cardio component on something like yes. an airdyne bike like that that's yes. kind of my go-to modality is is most of your strength training workouts last about 20 minutes and that that's that's more than enough in terms of you know, in, anybody who has not used this device that might not seem like a long workout but you're you're not really begging for more of the 20 minute mark yeah, we're joking. We're joking. It's a time machine. When it says like after 10 minutes, it's half time. You're like, no way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think the workouts go by pretty fast because you're switching from exercise to exercise at a pretty rapid pace. But yeah, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't want to go much more than 20 minutes with the strength training. But then what I do, because I like to just get my strength and my cardio done with all at once, if I have the option, just as a time hack, is you keep the suit on. And after the, the iPad finishes the strength training session, you can then select a cardio session. And you can set yes. your cardio for, 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 I think, 10, 20, 30, or I believe there's even a 40-minute option on there. But it's kind of like a lower intensity stimulation that is, again, more, more cardio-based. But I'll just walk over to the Airdyne bike and, and do the cardio while, while on the Airdyne. It is probably one of the more physically demanding cardio workouts that I ever do when I use that one-two modality of cardio mode plus the the full body bike now obviously on the on the ipad it, it'll show you how you can just run in place two jumping jacks etc but man oh man getting on a bike with that thing is is nuts and I, I actually wanted to ask you i don't recall if we covered this in detail in the last podcast but what is the difference in terms of the electrical modality used for the cardio versus strength because it feels remarkably different yeah it does so so first of all i also use that what i recommend there is a cardio interval training which is just basically you just see the logo, but it has timers um, where you basically do like 30 seconds of you go full on and then 30 seconds of just like recover. And I do this on the airline bike or on the assault bikes. And uh, you literally like for 30 seconds, you go like all out. And then again, like for 30 seconds or a minute, you just recover a little bit and combined assault bike with a uh, catalyst cardio is just it's it's wrecking it's absolutely yeah. wrecking so after after like 10 15 minutes of this i'm literally like sitting there and just catch my breath but um yeah it's it's a, it's a wonderful full workout okay coming back to the difference in what we do with the muscle so i don't know if we covered this last time but um each muscle group in the body has a characteristic uh, about how much of a trigger or how long of a trigger it needs to react so, which is the pulse width of an individual pulse. So in, in EMS training um, or in, in, in strength training, you basically send between one to roughly a hundred impulses per second. So one impulse per second is what you feel in the, let's start on the other side, the most common one. So in the power one, you send a hundred impulses a second. And what you do is you need to have that many impulses because the fast switch muscle fibers, when they fire, they also deactivate quickly. They don't just fire quickly, they also deactivate quickly. So to basically build them up to a full tetanus, what we want in power and strength, you need a lot of small nudges to the muscle to keep them in a full tetanus, so in a contraction. That's actually what you want to achieve. If you go below that, what happens is the uh, fast twitch muscle fibers fall off, they don't develop a full tetanus, and your main strength development comes from the slow twitch muscle fibers. That's roughly 75 hertz that we're using. Not it's 75 from we're using, but that's roughly the area. If you now go further down, what's happening is you have individual twitches and the muscle fibers actually don't develop a full tetanus. So they don't come to a full contraction. So they basically activate and then fall off again and activate and fall off again. So you have a use of ADP, you have a use of glycogen. If you have anything left, you should generally do strength first, cardio second, because during strength training, you need your glycogen in the muscle. And in uh, if you already did like 20 minutes of catalyst strength and want to go into cardio, you want to go also into fat burning and like, you know, these aspects. So do the second. So if you have anything left, it will then use more of the nutrients that are in your muscle, um, but will not create a full tetanus. So you feel these like small twitches. So basically what we're doing, we're nudging the muscle to work, but you still have enough control over your body that you can do complex movements like running or cycling or, you know, jumping jacks and so on and so forth. 
Yeah, because because with the with the strength, it like it sometimes feels as though the muscles almost in a state of pure tetanus to where like when you're doing an overhead press, I mean, it, you, you, you almost have to go inch by inch, which obviously isn't conducive to walking or running or being on a bike. Exactly. So, so the, the training goal that we have is we want to text the cardiovascular system. So you need to, you know, deliver more oxygen uh, because we want to get our VO2 max up. Uh, you have to deliver more nutrients. The blood has to be pumped through the body so the heart rate goes up. These are the goals in the cardio training. So what we're doing is we are taxing the cardiovascular system all over the body by activating muscle fibers, but just partially. Um, so your body basically does the running or does the assault bike, and then we put an additional tax on it, which is this incredible training because now your cardiovascular system really, really has to work. And that even works with individuals that, for example, have issues like knee replacements or hip replacements. So we have customers that literally just walk on a treadmill. They don't run. They just walk on a treadmill. But then they increase the load from the catalyst system and can get their heart rate exactly where they want it to be. Maybe they want it at 120, maybe they want it at 130. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can do this without running, you can do this without the impact on your bones and joints and so on and so forth. Or you are like, let's say, an MMA fighter, and you already do these uh, cardio uh, interval sessions, cardio interval sessions on assault bikes, because you're simulating like real exhaustion, like very, very strong exhaustions over 30 seconds or a minute. And then you need to learn how to, you know, get your heart rate down again and so on and so forth. If we now put the catalyst system on top of it, you literally get wrecked in this one minute, which is a very realistic training because we text your system on top of what um, you're doing from the traditional workout. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, there's some, some about it that's just absolutely crazy when it comes to, to the cardiovascular component. I mean, you, you can literally, and this is, this is kind of like my thing with the catalyst is I don't use it any more often. You may not want to hear this as the, the owner of the company, but any more often than about once per week, just because honestly, when I, when I do a workout, I just, I do the workout pretty seriously and go all in. And for me, there's enough little muscles that get recruited and enough of an impetus that I don't get from other strength training workouts that I'm sore enough from using that to where I don't really want to come back for a good week. And, and I actually have a lot of clients now who own the catalyst and we program in like either one cardio and one strength workout per week or one like strength cardio combo per week. And then on the other days, you know, they're doing a little bit of kettlebell, they're, they're lifting weights. Now when people travel, I have them using it more frequently. The other thing that I do, in addition to using it on an average of once per week, is if I know I'm not going to be able to work out for a few days, or if I have like a long haul flight, or if I just know that I'm I'm not going to be able to move much, I'll do a pretty tough catalyst workout. Because honestly, like I just don't feel like working out, or I feel as though I'm sore enough from that thing to where I don't need to. So if I've got a big long haul flight or something coming up, I'll do a big workout just because it. I mean, you literally feel as though you only have to work out like once a week when you when you wear this thing. I'd, uh, maybe I've got the the intensity turned up too high though, because I I do really really like to feel as though I'm I'm pushing against a thing. Everyone is different. So you, for example, you already have your training regimen. And if you want to supplement it with a catalyst and you do this and it gives you the results you want, perfect. My wife is the same. She's working out all the time and she uses it for especially lower body training, like glutes activation, uh, lower back activation, abs. Like these are really areas that are sometimes hard to train and absolutely loves it. And the same as you said, like when we're traveling, she always has a suit with her. That's absolutely the way to do it. I see this with quite some people that are very, very regular gym goers or like, you know, doing other types of trainings. It's a perfect supplement. And then if you are not working out at all and starting with just once a week, that already has life changing effect. So as long as you use it and you're regular use, I don't care how much you use it. I want it to fit into your life and I want it to be something that you can consistent with. Because if you can't be consistent with it, you're not going to be successful. You know that, right? If people yeah. overdo with something and you say you have to do this three times a week and then after six weeks, they fall off the regimen, that doesn't help anybody. Use it as much as you want and as you like it and, and then supplement it with other things. We see roughly an average use of like 1.8 a week. Um, that's what we see amongst our customers. Some use it more, some use it less. Do it how it fits into your life. Uh, that's how we designed it. Uh, yeah. You shouldn't be scheduling your trainer because he the trainer only has time at 6 30 or like seven in the morning or whatsoever like you should take on your suit do it whenever it fits into your life 
and then do it as often as you like. By the way, I also do it before I'm traveling. It's the best thing because then I also don't cramp up that much. When I'm sitting on a plane for long periods of time and I did Catalyst before, the muscles are just so exhausted. They just really relax. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's perfect for, for a long haul flight where you want to sleep and your body's just, all right, I'm, I'm ready for recovery. Now, we, we could go on to we're blue in the face about the science behind the catalyst, but we covered a lot of that in our initial episode. And, and again, I'll link to that and, um, and the catalyst and everything else we talk about at bengreenfieldlife.com slash catalyst two. And catalyst is about the K. So catalyst, the number two. The reason that we kind of originally decided to pop on and do this episode in the first place, this follow up episode, Bjorn, was there's been a lot that you guys have been finding in terms of research and science for other indications for this that go beyond just just fitness or getting ready for a for a long plane flight can you go into some of the things that you guys have been finding as, as far as the latest science and news on on this form of electrical muscle stimulation so some of this is like very nascent but what we are seeing is there's more and more studies coming up that indicate that the Full body muscle stimulation does not only benefit your muscle mass, but also um, your bone calcification, so bone density in general. The traditional science had it to a point, or like wisdom had it to a point that if you don't lift heavy weights, um, you don't have any positive impact on your bones. Catalyst is becoming more and more, besides the, um, the young, healthy, fit people who supplemented like you, it's becoming more and more a longevity topic. Um, and in longevity, we have two big problems. We have sarcopenia and we have osteoporosis, like on a physical uh, perspective. Sarcopenia, which is the loss of muscle mass as we age, is basically solved at this point in time. I know it's a big word, but if you do catalyst once a week, you're basically maintaining your muscle mass, if not gaining, as long as you want. Um, we normally use about 10% of our muscle mass every decade. Um, so at the age of like 85, we're left as men with like 60% or something like this. And, um, that has impact to our hormonal balances, to our activity levels. It has an impact to like how we burn calories. It has an impact on how we recover. If we're tripping, are we falling? Are we not? Are we breaking bones? Are we not? Yeah, we can, we can solve this. It's a bold statement, but you know, people that really use this and, uh, I have a lot of customers in their seventies and, uh, even some in their eighties, they say like, you know, it's, it's rejuvenating and they're becoming more active and, uh, females in their sixties say I can play with my kids again. It's, it's beautiful. Now, have you guys actually run, run any actual studies on the sarcopenia component? So we are currently starting one. Um, we are working with several universities on different specific topics. One is sarcopenia and uh, neurology, um, in, in aging. And they want to run it with like a group of subjects in their 60s um, and, and see how we can basically either stop it or even reverse it. Uh, we are having another uh, initiative uh, with, the, uh, with a subsection of the Mayo Clinic. It is a group called We Build Hearts. Um, they work with individuals that have congestive heart failure. We were not cleared for this yet. We're very clear. Like, you know, we're starting um, the research round. But they approached us and said, like, hey, we think that uh, full body MS training is a regimen that is uh, easy to be compliant with and that individuals um, that have heart issues can easily do. Um, they feel safe with it. It is safe. We can see like basically life extension. We have to still all run this and prove this, but this is the suggestion that's basically coming out of this. Okay. No, 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 and by the way, by the way, quick, quick interruption there about the the safety of using it with the heart is there any concern if there are fibrillation issues or electrical abnormalities in the heart because this obviously is an electrical signal so two things like if you have a pacemaker you must not use it mm -hmm. um, because the pacemaker basically will interpret the ems signal as a oh something is wrong and which is misfire um, that's basically what's happening we don't kill the pacemaker but it will be a misfire so first of all catalyst is the only FDA cleared device for home use. Uh, literally, we're the only device that you can use without supervision. And in order to get that, what we had to prove is that it is safe and does not affect the heart. If you have AFib or like really like a, a strong heart um, disease, you should definitely need to check in with your physician. But for a healthy heart, it is not an issue. So we had to basically prove that. And what, how we did this is we worked with a pacemaker company 
Um, so we basically said like, hey, how does a signal have to look like to actually reach the heart? And um, they said like, hey, show me your parameters. And uh, we showed them their parameters. And uh, they said, your device would be a very shitty pacemaker. And that was literally on the on the on the phone. Are you going to put that on the front page of your website? A very shitty pacemaker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, this was literally the um, the comment that the physician uh, from this pacemaker company gave us when I when I gave him the uh, the parameters. It's basically like the heart is very well protected. Um, there's a there's a sack with water. It's basically a Faraday cage, and like the 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 human body is phenomenal. Like you know how it protects itself. So um, we cannot reach the heart. Um, otherwise, we also wouldn't have been cleared. On top of that, our device um, is physically built in a way, and you see this when you open the suit. Um, for example, there are two electrodes on the right pectoral muscle and two electrodes on the left pectoral muscle and two on the right uh, biceps and triceps and so on and so forth. So we have made sure that there's never a current going across the body. So for example, if you go, if you have a, a defibrillator or like a, an AED device, like in, you have to basically put one on the on the left side of your of your chest and one on top of your right pack. This is basically how you have to put it because the current has to flow from one electrode to the other and basically has to penetrate the heart. Um, so our device is designed that it stays within the muscle and just superficial. On top of that, we are only sending one percent of the energy that you would have needed to reach the heart. So that's absolutely not an issue. Remember last time you were at a gas station and you saw those like over the counter sexual performance enhancing pills? They're tempting, I know, but if you ever actually looked at the ingredients, it's a bunch of like central nervous system overstimulants that give you a you know, four hour erection and nasty side effects and heart problems, a possible trip to the hospital. There are certain pharmaceuticals out there that you could take for enhanced sexual performance, but why not go au natural? There's this company called Joy Mode. My wife and I have been using this stuff. What it is, is it's a powder you pour into water. And it's got L-citrulline, arginine, yohimbine, and vitamin C. The arginine and the yohimbine increase nitric oxide production and relaxation in your, uh, in your genitalia and increase sex drive. And the antioxidant action of the vitamin C protects the nitric oxide from what's called oxidative degradation, which further enhances the blood flow promoting activity of the nitric oxide. So put all that together, you get enhanced sex drive and blood flow for both ladies and gentlemen to their nether regions. And it doesn't have all the sorts of side effects that prescription medications or over-the-counter gas station pills come with. Uh, you just tear open the sachet, you mix it with some water, I dump it straight into my mouth because I'm weird like that, and they take about 45 minutes to four hours prior to sexual activity. It'll last about five hours or so. Uh, you get better blood flow, better erection quality and firmness, screaming better orgasms, better sexual energy, better sex drive. So if you want to spice things up in the bedroom naturally and boost your sex performance naturally and do it without nasty prescription drugs or pharmaceuticals or prescriptions, then here's my offer for you. Go to usejoymode.com slash greenfield. That's usejoymode, J-O-Y mode.com forward slash greenfield. Or you can just enter the code uh, greenfield at usejoymode.com. They'll get you 20% off your first order. Have fun with that one. I'm pretty stoked because this is now something I can do and I'm on the go. And it's based on this idea that the human body being mostly water. But what you probably don't know is everything else in your body is 50% amino acids. That means basically water and amino acids are two of the most important things that you can have in your body. And some amino acids are essential. You have to get them from food, from breaking down steak and chicken and eggs and everything else. But this stuff called Keon Aminos is a plant-based full essential amino acids profile backed by over 20 years of clinical research with the highest quality ingredients, no fillers, no junk, rigorous quality testing, tastes amazing with all natural flavors. I got on the amino acids bandwagon way back when I was racing Ironman triathlon, started with branch chain amino acids, realized those were a waste of time, switched over to essential amino acids, and it has been a game changer ever since. Now, what did I mean when I said travel? Well, these Keon aminos, which are the essential amino acids that I take, they have for the watermelon flavor, the lemon lime flavor, the berry flavor, and uh, the mango flavor. They got stick packs now. 
So you can take them on the go anywhere. I, can, I honestly have like a couple packs of my fanny pack now. I can dump them in water when I'm at a restaurant, have that instead of like a bread, a basket that comes out or a cocktail. They satiate the appetite. They accelerate recovery. They're amazing pre-workout or during a workout. The list goes on and on. Fact is, if you haven't tried essential amino acids, you're missing out. And you can save 20% now on any monthly deliveries and 10% on any one-time purchases. If you go to getkeon.com slash Ben, that's get com slash Ben to get my fundamental supplement for fitness. Keon Aminos, get com slash Ben. This is it. This is a big announcement. I'm thinking you're going to really dig this. It's something I've been working on. For the past three years, probably one of the biggest and most exhausting projects I've ever done in my life. I've been asked for a long time to write a book on family and parenting and legacy and raising healthy and resilient and free thinking and impactful children. I've never felt very qualified to be able to write that kind of book because my sons are just 14 and who's to say they're not going to wind up in prison. Uh, <laughs> but I know a lot of parents with incredibly impactful children, entrepreneurs, billionaires, single moms and dads, divorced parents, pastors, my parents, education experts, legacy builders, wealth management experts, just people who have really decoded life, legacy, discipline, education, everything that goes into kind of like the blueprint for raising a tiny little superhuman. So what I did was kind of in the style of you know, like Tools of Titans or Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss, if you're familiar with that, I basically interviewed over 30 sets of amazing, amazing parents. And I gathered all their knowledge, all their wisdom, all their little tips and tricks and insider strategies and tools and resources. And I put them all together in a book. I don't know if you read my book, Boundless, but this is like what Boundless was for biohacking, this is that for parenting. It's actually called Boundless Parenting. It is well over 650 pages long. It is a tome. It is everything a new parent or existing parent or teacher or grandparent or anyone else who interacts with children would ever need to know with interviews and tips from the best of the best parents on the face of the planet. It's called Boundless Parenting Tools, Tactics, and Habits of Great Parents. Boundless Parenting Tools, Tactics, and Habits of Great Parents. It's available now for pre-orders. It's uh, all at boundlessparentingbook.com. I guess there's not a whole lot for me to say other than that. If you go to boundlessparentingbook.com, you can sign up there. You can get on the pre-order list. We're giving away a bunch of bonuses to the first handful of people who get on that pre-order list. So pre-orders are open. Yeah. Now, if you're hearing this, boundlessparentingbook.com, I am so blessed and I'm so grateful and I'm so freaking excited about this project. You have no idea. I'm just like beaming from ear to ear right now. So if you can help me share the word about this book, gosh, I would be super grateful. If you want to pick one up for yourself or copies for friends, again, I'd be super grateful. I think that we can change a lot of people's lives, a lot of children's lives, develop legacies that will last for generations to come after we've left this planet with a book like this. So boundlessparentingbook.com. Check it out. And thank you so much for being a part of this. In addition to what you found on sarcopenia and this idea that it, that it might actually be something useful for congestive heart failure, I think another thing you had mentioned to me was an impact on on bone density, which was actually surprising to me because this this is something, and I think I've even commented on this in the past. I've told people, well, you, know, you could do electrical muscle stimulation or or like blood flow restriction or CAT2 training, but at some point you have to load the bone, you know, along the long axis of the bone to actually increase bone density. But it, it seems that you're you're indicating that might not be the case with something like EMS. It has to be the case still. However, the way you design the EMS training might have that side effect as well. So we have first studies in that basically suggest if you are not doing passive EMS, so for example, if you recover from a knee surgery and you're lying on the couch and you put a tense unit on it, that has no bone density impact at all. You should clarify, and sorry to interrupt just real quick, you said a TENS unit. This confuses a lot of people because TENS is simply the, the, the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation where you aren't actually recruiting muscles, right? Exactly. So a TENS unit does not have this, this impact. Even a local EMS unit, like for example, a Compax, that um, you would use just sitting would not have that impact. 
Um, however, when you are moving, when you are lunging, when you are doing biceps curls and so on and so forth, and you're moving your body against the weight, what's happening is two things. Like, first of all, there is some impact from your body, but there is a stress because your quads and your hamstrings, to use this as an example, are contracting at the same time. The muscles are basically the straight line. Um, they have, they're basically pulling in a straight line. And the bones generally have a little bit of an arch to it. Um, so, for example, your femur like, you know, has an arch to it, like towards the hip and so on and so forth. And there is some stress. And this is currently where like science is getting deeper into. They're saying like we're seeing measurable DEXA scan, measurable bone increases if individuals are training for a year. Like it's not something that changes within weeks as, as the muscles do. The muscles accept, uh, you know, uh, adapt much sooner. But we are seeing increases in bone minerality um, in elderly people after a year of training and which is like twice interesting it stopped the decrease and it had even increases so there are in the, in the initial signals there's more science now currently um, conducted or like more studies conducted but there are in the initial signals that so if you have active protocols like what catalyst does we don't put people on a chair or on a couch or something like this if you have active protocols with intense muscle work uh, like power muscle stimulation uh, you actually see results also in bone minerality. It's not the same as if you lift 400 pounds, of course. But for people who cannot lift 400 pounds, this is a good solution. Okay, got it. So so congestive heart failure, sarcopenia, bone density, it all seems to be indicated for that. Anything else that you found out from a research or, or a science standpoint that surprises you or that or that's kind of new on the EMS front? All these aspects are aspects that we didn't design the product for. That's quite interesting. So People tell us, for example, like I had one individual, he's an MD himself. Um, he had prostate cancer. And uh, when you have prostate cancer and get basically your prostate removed, your quality of life is basically shit. And to recover from that, it takes roughly ten, uh, six months. That's what he basically told us. Uh, and he is an MD and he can like take things in a way that, you know, we as normal individuals wouldn't do that. Um, and, and treat himself. And he said he used Catalyst because a friend recommended it to him. And his quality of life was back after two months instead of six because the pelvic floor activation was so significant. It helped him to redevelop his pelvic floor in two months rather than six. And these are things where I'm like, whoa. And people just reached out after they achieved that. They literally like, you know, MDs just use it themselves. And, uh, basically like decided to do that. So there are all these different areas that we are now starting with partners um, from the medical community to establish, you know, the, the foundation for this so that at one day, this could actually be an additional non-invasive treatment for a lot of different aspects that we hadn't had before. Another individual that reached out to me and this is what I meant when I said I get these random LinkedIn messages. I literally have individuals who seek me out on LinkedIn and just tell me like, hey, this is what I did. This is how long I have your Catalyst suit. Uh, this is what I achieved. Thank you for building this. And this is just like the most beautiful piece of my job. Um, so this one individual said he's a dentist. And I went on his podcast and he said, you basically fixed my occupational pain. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, As dentists, um, we are in this very weird position that we constantly have to work in and our career basically ends when we cannot tolerate the pain anymore. And it was interesting. I didn't know that. And he said, you know, I've been using Catalyst for six weeks and my back pain is gone and my like mobility is back. And uh, he said, like, please come on my podcast because he has a podcast that talks about how to be better dentists. And we just talked about occupational pain as a dentist. And he basically said, like, hey, every dentist should have one. It increases your career or like or like extends your career. And the the, return, the ROI of this device is like two days or something like that. And um, and he said it's it's just increasing your quality of life quite a bit. So very, very interesting use cases, frozen shoulder problems of individuals that couldn't finish their golf swings, which people say like frozen shoulders really hard to treat or um, general like back problems, um, like back pain. Yeah. So so very interesting, very interesting use cases. And and by the way, that's interesting that, that you say that about the prostate and the pelvic floor, because we, we briefly mentioned this the first time I interviewed you, but there are devices out there like a company called Innovo. They make a pelvic floor trainer that they advertise as like pull on shorts that act as a 
Kegel exerciser for things like uh, incontinence or prolapse, or even just an inability to, let's say, maintain blood flow or, or rectile quality because of pelvic floor detraining. There are also devices that I know have become increasingly popular at physical therapy clinics. For example, there's one called an M sculpts device that, that you sit on. That's like electrical muscle stimulation for the pelvic floor and almost like a chair that you sit on. And I, I'd run this by you briefly in our last episode. You can basically, by turning up the leg stimulation component of the catalyst suit, get that same thing. If you're just looking for like some of the, the some of the sexual health, pelvic floor training, you know, staving off incontinence, prolapse, etc. So again, because you're using all these little muscles that you know in the average barbell squat, you might not actually be consciously activating those pelvic floor muscles. But this, this is another perfect example to where you're, you're using these muscles you haven't used before and up training, in this case, some, some very important, often neglected muscles in the pelvis. It's a full body suit, but a big part of it is these shorts that pull on that have electrodes very close to those areas. Nothing over the genitals. Don't worry, folks. But it's, it's close <laughs> no. enough to the pelvic floor to where you can, you can get some pretty significant benefits from like a sexual health pelvic floor standpoint. Spot on. The nice thing for me is you're generally getting healthier because it's a full body workout. That's why I originally built it. And then you have this million of positive side use cases, which is literally sexual health, which is incontinence, like especially for women uh, postnatal, postpartum have sometimes urinary problems. And I, I went to a hotel room, um, like to a hotel um, the other day and there was an ad and I was like, this is the solution. I, it was basically a, not a catheter, but like an, an inlay for the bed for, for women who have incontinence problems. And I was like, this is an awful situation if this is your solution. So we can solve this literally. I mean, my wife had small, you know, incontinence problem when she was jumping, like plyos, like very heavy, just that, like just a drop here and there, like very small. She said, since she's doing like catalyst, like it's gone. Um, my sister had this problem, like gone. It's like literally postpartum incontinence and like, you know, all these aspects, like literally gone. And um, yeah, I, I can tell you it, it works. It absolutely works. Yeah. And uh, as her husband, I can also tell you it works. I don't know if this fits into this podcast, but I can t literally tell you the the, the self-esteem and the, the amount of joy that comes from a, a, a good health and a good core is just absolutely amazing. And you don't even have to do anything extra and you don't need a device extra. It's like you're already doing this. And as you said, if you have very deep squats or Russian squats or so on and so forth, um, with all these electrodes, like it literally activates it. Interestingly for me, women have more awareness of their pelvic floor than men do um, because I think they are more accustomed to like dealing with it. I sometimes have men telling me like, oh, it like really tickles down here. And I'm like, yeah, this is what you should also have awareness of, by the way. Um, so it's a way of training, but it's also an awareness builder. Um, so very interesting side effects. The other thing related to the uh, the idea of, let's say, grabbing little muscles that you normally wouldn't use or training areas that have been detrained, like the pelvic floor, is kind of this interesting concept that there is, say, like via the use of cold thermogenesis, like cold bath soaks or cold water immersion yes. or even cryotherapy chambers, this phenomenon where people report elimination of, of strange pains and fibromyalgia that they've been trying to fight for years or this full body effect that they're unable to get if they were to just consciously engage in some type of training protocol. And it's almost as though by outsourcing to a device or to cold water or to heat activities that your brain is no longer doing, you affect this, this interesting change in health that I, I think dictates the idea of using ancestral mechanisms like cold and heat or modern mechanisms like electrical muscle stimulation allow you to actually kind of like have your own medicine cabinet at your disposal when it comes to getting the body to shift in a way that you're just unable to get it to shift consciously because you're outsourcing the work to the brain of cold or the brain of heat or the brain of electricity. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you're spot on here. I think this whole area of exercise as medicine um, where we have now multiple partners that we're working with and we're doing like small studies or small um, you know, projects to like really, really find out what we can do with this new tool of electromassive stimulation. 
it is almost like an unlock where where people have not been successful with what they try to to do to improve their their physical health but this is so easy to do and your body starts to feel different very very quickly um it is almost like you could say an entry drug um to to a healthier lifestyle so i for example was plagued with the um, stress headaches my whole life they basically came from my neck i later found out uh, which was like almost cramping. I'm hypermobile around my neck, so that didn't help. So a lot of like spinal problems that I generally have, like neck and then lower back. But um, the use of EMS training, especially around crampy muscles, like muscles that are basically in pain and trying not to move because they can get in a constant state of of being tight, gets basically broken as a vicious cycle because they get so exhausted, they literally have to relax. and And that breaks a vicious cycle. So I haven't had these kind of migraines or headaches for 10 years now since I've been using uh, full body EMS starting in 2012. And then on top of that, uh, we, we, you asked me like the other day, you know, why I get so sore. There's first of all, I'm, I'm activating muscles that were basically underdeveloped or dormant. But also like I think, and this is something that we have to get deeper into, when I'm not using muscle fibers or certain aspects of the body, I don't know what the state of that is. I mean, we have cells in the body that are just in a very bad state and basically toxic for the environment. So with um, powered muscle stimulators or electro muscle stimulation, um, when I'm just activating muscles that basically are dormant or broken or not really working, and all these get broken up, I basically just flush out bad cellular neighbors, so to say. Uh, Dr. Kaufman always calls this, like if you have a grumpy neighbor, like, you know, they make everybody else's life miserable. And just like, generally clean up your muscle mass and um, get rid of your cramps. And this is why we see customers that report my frozen shoulder is gone or my headaches are gone or uh, my my mobility increased. Um, uh, one very, very interesting case we had is um, an individual heavily overweight um, was up for a hip replacement surgery. And um, his doctor said, hey, you have to increase your strength pre-surgery so that your rehabilitation gets better. So you need a good prehab. Um, so reached out because he heard from a friend that um, there's Catalyst, he got a Catalyst suit, he did Catalyst for six weeks. And his physician said like, hey, keep doing what you're doing. You know, you're doing well. He did another six weeks. And after six weeks, they held on and said like, hey, let's, let's pause uh, your schedule for your hip replacement surgery. Lost weight, got stronger, pain went down, mobility went up. Nine months later, they called off the surgery. They said, we don't need it anymore. Your, your muscles are now strong enough to keep your, your joint in place and, your, and to carry your body, lost weight, increased muscle mass, and uh, just massively increased uh, quality of life. So now his surgeon reached out like, you know, hey, I want to work with you guys, like, you know, how we can use this. Uh, it's so much better before surgery. Um, and, and for people where we can't even fix it, it would definitely accelerate recovery. Yeah, so there's a lot new stuff coming up um, by people using our product and other products um, in the rest of the world. Um, I think this is a very nascent field where we can improve people's quality of life quite a bit. And, um, and we are, we're learning every day. And as we learn, we will work then again with the FDA to get clearance for new indications for use. Uh, we'll come up with new protocols. Uh, we're very excited. Yeah. The list of benefits goes on and on, but then the 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 delivery mechanism, you know, via these these small, you know, bite size workouts works really really well. And that that that's actually something I wanted to ask you, as far as the the workouts that are on there and the frequency with which they're updated, or you know, kind of like the, another popular training device is is the Tonal, which is a wall mounted exercise device that allows you to choose from different trainers to different full body workouts to to isolated muscle parts workouts now what are you guys doing as far as like updates to the app new workouts new modalities anything like that 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 has occurred since the last time that we spoke yeah so um we onboarded i think four new trainers since last time that we spoke um for example one um who i really like uh, a lot is like for me for my own trainings is matt um he's a mma coach and uh he has very good um or series of, of training. So for example, you can learn how to box, but like he really not, not only 
does a workout with you, but he also tells, teaches you technique. And it's almost like the build up of like, hey, here's this one, here's this one, take care of this. So you almost forget that you're working out because you're also getting coached on boxing. And then he has like a series of like one, two, three, four um, like different workouts and they all built on top of each other. I really like that. Um, we're getting in, we added um, the first few set of, of workouts that are injury prevention um, specific. So for example, uh, ACL um, stabilization. So all the exercises within this workout really go around like stabilizing your your knee joint and all the adjacent muscles around that. Uh, we're getting into uh, golf very soon. Um, so we are building um, specific workouts for golfers. Uh, there's a huge community out there and um, a lot of Catalyst customers are golfing and said like, hey, do you have something that's specific for this? Uh, we want to get into like seasonal things, like how do you prepare for skiing? Um, these kind of things. We're onboarding more trainers. We're massively increasing the team at the moment. Um, with with the initial success that we had, uh, we were able to raise a nice uh, Series A round. And that allows us to grow the supply chain, grow the team, get more trainers, get more content. Uh, we're insourcing our software team at the moment, hiring like additional uh, members on the tech side. Yeah, just like uh, amazing stuff to come. What we're also going to build is uh, we're going to recommend more to you what to do next. Um, so based on what you have been doing, uh, we might build in like other data sources like um, your Whoop or your Aura or your Apple Watch. And like we, we understand like where you are today when you work out. Uh, this is a little bit further out, but we're getting there uh, to really basically to become your personal trainer that really says like, hey, you did this. OK, today you should be doing this. And um, yeah, so we, we started with yoga content. Um, I don't know if you tried some of those yet. Uh, there's definitely more to come. Yes. I just updated the app a few days ago. Now I haven't delved into any of the yoga or anything. What What are some of your favorite workouts that you you just uh, have as your go-tos? Yeah, so I uh, literally like at the moment, it's like Matt's boxing series. I like that a lot. Matt uh, has this. Um, then Max has a few uh, dynamic strength training workouts that are like high intensity, high emotion. I really like those. Uh, there's a lower back strength, which I use for my lower back. Um, and then, uh, like I said, I combine the cardio interval workout with an airdyne bike and yeah, just wrecking. If somebody's listening in and they want to try this thing, obviously it's not a one size fits all people come in a variety of shapes and sizes. You can't just pull on the suit. How's the sizing actually work? Is, is it kind of like when you get a wet suit and you, you submit your, your arm, your shoulder size, your, your chest width, et cetera, or how exactly do you figure out what size you're supposed to get? Yeah, so so similar to that, like the the one other company in our field that I can think of that has a similar um, personalization is Aura. Um, so you buy basically a ring, <laughs> you buy a voucher for a ring, and then you get a ring kit set. And then like after a while, you say like I want size ten or something like this, is which what I wear, for example. Um, so the way we do it is um, so you get your you, you you buy your suit, and uh, we send you a form, and in this form we ask you about five six different sizes. So um, circumference, chest, waist, uh, we want your height, your weight, and uh, gender. And with this, we are then basically, we, this all goes into an algorithm, and it basically picks the, the right combination of sizes for your base layer, for your vest, for your shorts, and for your arm straps. Okay. And, and the last time that we talked, there was an issue with just like a massive wait list. Like people having to wait months and months to get one. What's the status of the wait list component right now? So it is still long um, and there are still people on this wait list. However, we are able now to uh, ship in much shorter periods of time. So like six weeks, something like this should definitely be possible. Um, we had some events um, where we then once of a sudden had a lot of inventory where we were able to ship in two weeks. But like six weeks is something that's like probably more realistic. I'm just back from a trip in Asia. We found some amazing, very, very scalable production partners in Taiwan. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be much better. Um, it's down from like six months to like weeks. Um, that definitely is, is coming back. Um, the wait list is still very, very long. But, um, you know, we, we are shipping and uh, yeah, it's also dependent on sizes. So you can be lucky. So sometimes one size was out. So, for example, uh, this summer, small shorts were out, which means like generally like females, a lot of females, we, we weren't able to ship, but males got their ship. Shipping, so we we've overcome this, and uh, yeah, now it's like in the six weeks area. 
Okay, gotcha. Now, we we last time had a deal where people could like get moved up towards the front of the wait list if they were to to get one as one of my podcast listeners following the link that we have in the show notes. Uh, if if somebody goes through something like that, I believe are you, are you guys still doing like the expedited delivery and a, a personal I think it was that and and people also get like a personal onboarding via Zoom, right? Exactly. So, uh what we do with your like with with key partners like you uh, what we do is we prioritize delivery. Um, so people who come through your link, uh, that's probably more like two weeks, but only two weeks after you gave us your sizing. As a customer, um, you have to give us sizing information after you purchase because only then we can put it together, ship it out, and so on and so forth. So if you do the purchase, uh, get your sizing in as soon as possible. Uh, two weeks is very reasonable for your customers. Uh, we're still moving you guys in front of the line and uh, yes, you get a personal Zoom onboarding if you wish to. Okay, got it. And yeah, I mean, th- this thing can literally replace an entire gym if you really had to, you know, especially if you live in a small condo or apartment or something like that. Like like I mentioned, I, I'll still use kettlebells. I still use the ARX. But as far as throwing this in a few times a month to just grab all these new muscles and train stuff you've, you've never trained before, I think it's it's well worth the investment. And you, you guys also have some kind of like a payment plan because I think if someone were to just like lay down cash and buy this all at once, it's uh, how much is it? I forget. It's like $2,385, but we probably have to raise the price as soon as everything else in the, in the economy has to go up. But yeah. at the moment it's 2385 we have, um, so basically how it works is you do a $500 deposit and uh, I think on your, it's like direct checkout. And if you do a firm, it's 66 bucks a month. Okay. That's 66 bucks a month. You got like zero interest for, was it like, yes. like three years, something like that? Three years. Exactly. Yeah. That. Yes. Okay. So six, eight, that's, that's less than a health club membership. So it's not, it's not a bad deal. And while I see a lot of exercise trends come and go and people send me all sorts of crazy stuff to try, this is definitely one that has stuck. I mean, if people hear me talk about my own workouts, it's like the kettlebells, or hell yes. Blood flow restriction bands, absolutely. Some form of super slow training, yes. And then uh, cold, heat, but this idea of throwing in some technology and using electrical muscle stimulation, I mean, it, it's a no-brainer in this case, literally and figuratively, because it, it just allows you to train in an ex- incredibly unique fashion. So if you're a fitness enthusiast or if you're somebody who wants to stave off sarcopenia or work on you know bone density or you know boxing skills, I guess long story short is there there's a significant cardiovascular health effect from this. It's not just strength. Absolutely. So we have we have studies from Europe and and this is again when you said like hey this stuck. So in Europe it's now a thing for 15 years. 